Ooh, what's up, YouTube? ODST General back again with some more inter-system news. And uh, this week, guys, we have a lot of goodies to show off to you. Uh, now, obviously, the last time we did a video, we announced the Jackals. And then I had mentioned very briefly that after I had recorded the video in the comment section, I should say I mentioned this, uh, after I had recorded and uploaded the video, uh, there was another major announcement, which we're going to talk about here this week in just a little bit. Uh, starting us off, of course, we have Operation Trebuchet and kind of a more minor thing relatively speaking uh we have some retextures for the scorpion tanks which is of course really cool uh you know just basically uh desert and jungle camouflages here uh there is also additional stuff being developed as far as textures and alternate variants they are also working on the artillery variant of the scorpion which we've shown off previously uh, so that's all being worked on, which is really neat. Um, as far as main Operation Trebuchet stuff, I don't think there was anything else as far as I've seen uh, these past couple weeks. Uh, unfortunately, I may have missed a couple things previously, too, that I thought I had talked about or maybe just didn't realize. Because as it turns out, um, a setting I had in DaVinci by default was eating some of my files and making them like really hard to see. So uh, I, I think I fixed it. And I don't think there's anything this week I'm missing, but that may have been something I've missed uh, previously, just so you guys know, for like the last week or so. Um, but the big news that I mentioned last week, and there's still a lot of big news this week, but probably the biggest news this week is the announcement of the Flood. Now, the Flood is being made as what will probably be an official extension to Operation Trebuchet, like First Contact, but something separate. Um, it hasn't been named yet, and I don't know the full details of everyone who is working on this and everything, uh, but we got a quick tease from this from the uh, from the news, and it looks really cool. Uh, we get to basically see a bunch of inf uh, flood infection folks placed down in Zeus, and they're all walking, and then when they get killed, they fall down and explode, just like in Halo, releasing infection forms everywhere. I think I said infection forms, I meant to say carrier forms the first time. I don't know. It's just one of those things. Um, but yeah, it's really cool. You get to basically see the infection forms latch on to uh, some standard Arma 3 default men, but it actually takes them over and it turns them into combat forms, and you briefly get to see them as combat forms before they're gunned down by some additional infantry further behind them. Um, but yeah, just absolutely awesome to see. This looks really far along. I'm actually kind of surprised they haven't had the initial release for this. I would not be surprised if we see this relatively soon. But, you know, again, I don't know what sort of additions or requirements they plan to have for this before they release it. So it could still be a while before we actually end up getting to see this. But uh, hopefully not too terribly long. We also have a, a still shot of one of the infection forms going after a marine, and you guys get to see that up a lot closer. Now that's going to be really cool, and I'm really looking forward to uh, actually getting to show that off to you guys. I'm sure you guys are going to be really hyped about actually getting that. Now, uh, that brings us over to community, and we have a ton of community stuff to show off. Starting us off, we have a uh, quick announcement from uh, Joshua Ellis, that's the guy from Project Shipyards, which we've talked about previously. Uh, basically, he has announced over on their Discord, the Project Shipyards Discord, that uh, they will be basically hosting a uh, preview of all of their assets sometime in about a month, he has said. And uh, content, well, not necessarily content creators, but uh, people create compositions and stuff, which I guess is content and makes you a content creator. <laughs> um, they're going to be invited if you apply to this. And you'll be able to actually get a early sneak peek at all the stuff Project Shipyard's working on and get the opportunity to get feedback and stuff like that. So that's going to be really cool if you guys apply to that, if you're interested. Um, I don't think everybody will be accepted, but if you guys are into creating compositions, you know, you're somebody who works with like a unit making missions and stuff like that, that will be a great opportunity for you. Um, so definitely something to check out. Uh, so then we're going to swing over to the first MU, and the first MU, like always, has a lot of stuff. Now, they just released a bunch of stuff into their mod pack, including their Ghost, uh, Spartan Laser, the Drop Pods for the Covenant, their CSO, or, yeah, it was the CSO, which is bigger than my map, which is crazy, um, and a lot of stuff, Covenant, like, uh, Gas Tank, I think it was, the Plasma Canister Tanks, a lot of cool stuff that they just released, and... 
Then they just go and just casually drop like this huge list of new work in progress things. Uh, starting us off, we have a Halo 1 or a more modernized Halo 1 set of marine armor. So this is not exactly one to one with the original Halo. This is a uh, concept art for a more modernized version. Uh, there's a lot more detail in the helmets. There's extra stuff strapped onto them and things like that. Um, Personally, I've always really liked the Halo 1 armor. It has always remained one of my favorites just because it feels very... It feels still like something that's possible, but it's so far removed from our own current reality that it just feels really awesome. It's part of why I fell in love with Halo is just the such a unique look that while still technically possible is just again completely unlike anything that we'd actually see in the modern day world whereas you know more recent halos has gone a little bit more towards you know realistic modern day like body armors and stuff and you know they've kind of come back and there's been a little bit back and forth on that where it still feels you know in a lot of ways kind of far removed or there's a lot more hard armors as opposed to soft armors like you'd see but still uh, again, this is one of my favorites, so I'm really hyped to see this. I'm really hoping we also get a variant with the uh, the single eyepiece maybe integrated into the helmet. Um, although there is, you know, of course, you know, multiple versions of that eyepiece included as attachments. So I guess that's not such a big deal even if we get it. As long as it looks decent with like the Opcan or the Optray one, I think that'll be fine too. Uh, then they've got the Cobra that they teased off, and the Cobra actually they've made some pretty decent progress on it. It's still a decent ways off uh, from being completed. The Cobra, one of my personal favorite vehicles, if not my favorite vehicle from Halo Wars. Uh, you know, practically speaking, I don't know how well something like this is going to work in armor. This will be a, like a great tank destroyer, I imagine. Um, it looks like it will have uh, possibly the lockdown capability, though I'm not sure to what full extent we'll actually see this functioning with lockdown. Um, but that would be really cool to actually see this thing in-game and functioning like that. Um, I don't know what sort of benefit Lockdown will actually have in this, other than, you know, giving you basically the ability to get a, a tighter group shot. You won't have the split between the two barrels for the Gauss Cannon. Um, I can't imagine it would give you a more powerful shot, but maybe it will. Who knows? It'd be really cool to see, though. I'm really looking forward to the addition of that if we do get it. Um, I should say when we do get it, because the first MU's track record is, uh, pretty good as far as getting this stuff in for so far um then we've also got the first mu working on a frigate now this is of course the same frigate we've got in game at least as far as i'm aware um but this one has an interior so this one actually has a, a pretty sizable hanger it appears to have odst drop bays on the bottom uh, it's got the side hangers and stuff basically this is functionally like the old frigate that we used to have in Operation Trebuchet that got removed when Zero had left the mod. Um, so this will have, you know, basically a functional interior and everything. And I think a lot of people are probably going to be really hyped up about that. Of course, a lot of people really like the Drake, but it's a smaller ship. And, uh, of course, that does kind of limit people a little bit. So having a larger vessel like the Frigate with an interior, I'm sure a lot of people are really going to be very excited for something like this to actually get added in. Uh, now let's move over to the first MEU Covenant stuff, and of course, just like always, a big focus of the first MEU is Covenant expansion. Um, one of the first things that was shared with me by Euler is the concussion rifle that they're working on. So they are working on a concussion rifle, um, which should be a pretty interesting weapon to see how they uh, work this out in Arma, of course. Um, it's something that, you know, kind of works like a, a grenade launcher almost, but it's very rapid firing compared to like what you'd expect from a normal grenade launcher. Um, I guess maybe probably something similar to what we see with the uh, the fuel rod cannon, but just on a much more scaled down version as far as both the damage, obviously the size of the weapon, and this being a primary weapon as opposed to a launcher. Uh, but nonetheless, this should still be really cool, so I'm pretty excited for this. Um, the first MU is also working on a version of the Spire. Now, of course, we actually just showed off the, uh, the Spire that the 41st had added into their mod. Um, theirs had an interior as well. From what I understand, the, uh, I think I was told that the Spire is going to be in a couple different pieces for the uh, first. Um, it's a gorgeous looking model though. It uh, seems to be quite highly detailed, of course not textured or anything yet, and uh, 
you know, they don't have the uh, the shield and stuff in place for it yet, but still a really cool piece. Um, again, a little less exciting because we did just get it, but uh, I'm sure, you know, having this in a single mod as opposed to two separate mods is going to be a nice benefit for a lot of people. Okay, so... Uh, then we go on. There's a lot to talk about here with the first time you and I've also got a little bit of a cold. Yeah, I'm sick again. I, some of this seems to be a running joke, especially when I don't do any videos for like weeks and weeks and weeks. And then like I'm only doing videos basically when I'm sick. <laughs> and like all this time that I'm healthy in between, I just don't do videos it seems like. Anyways, we've got the uh, anti-air gun shown off in the Halo 2 E3 trailer, the, uh, the demo trailer. Uh, that shoots down Major Easley. Good old Major Easley. It's a, it's a fan favorite of mine, you know. I just, guy didn't get enough credit for that, like, one minute he was in Halo. Um, yeah, really cool asset, though. This is gonna be another massive gun that'll go right alongside with the, uh, the Tyrant gun and everything, so that should be really cool to see. Uh, the first MU also teased off their work in progress of the Scarab model, and of course, you know, again, this is something we've talked about a while back that they'd started. Um, still in a lot of pieces, and I don't know exactly how this thing's gonna work. I don't know how functional this thing's going to be, if it's mostly just gonna be, like, a static prop, and then, like, the turret on the back works, and maybe the head's a turret that works, but the vehicle just stands still otherwise. Um, I really can't imagine this thing working as a functional vehicle, given its size and scale. Um, I guess maybe there's something they could do if, like, they managed to basically get several vehicles that were able to, like, move together. They could, like, I don't know, attach, like, do attach to, like, the vehicles and have them, like, work as, like, the legs be, like, independent vehicles or something. I don't know that that would be functionally viable in Arma, but just a, a thought. Um, I, I don't know, though. It's so big, I can't imagine, like, this being a single vehicle that's really functional, but... Uh, nonetheless, even if it's just like a static prop and then maybe the, the head and the, uh, the rear turret, the mud, like the dorsal turret, function as turrets, that would be still really cool. Or and even just as like a modeled out static prop, even if the turrets weren't functional, would still be pretty cool. I'd still be excited for that because, uh, you know, we don't have it right now. That's, uh, so that would still be better than what we have. Uh, then they're also working on a updated... Covenant Cruiser. Now, of course, they already have uh, Covenant Cruisers in the first MEU mod. Uh, we do get to see this actually textured out and everything, and this new model looks absolutely gorgeous in Substance Painter. Now, the reason that this is uh, being redone is because they're actually making a version with a interior, which is really awesome. So again, uh, you know, just like the frigate, they're setting up a uh, Covenant version with an interior. They're making modular hallway pieces for Covenant ships, which looks awesome. Um, a lot of people seeming to be inspired by Project Shipyards this week. Uh, we also get to see the, uh, the hangar bay from Truth and Reconciliation. So the, uh, basically the spirit landing bay where it's elevated up on second floor with a walkway that extends out in the center and then a third floor above that. Um, of course a really awesome play space. It doesn't, from this angle, look like it extends out the whole way, but it's kind of hard to tell. Um, I'm guessing the doors are just recessed back in such a location that we can't actually see them from the angle of the camera. Uh, but really, I'm still excited to actually see this being implemented. And then we have, uh, to round us up with the uh, first MEU, a Forerunner location, which is a, uh, a problem from Halo Wars. I don't actually know what the structure is supposed to be. Um, I guess this is just like an access tunnel or something, but the Sentinels will be able to like pop up out of this. You know, these things are big structures that are in the ground and everything. Um, I don't think this is the power silo from Halo Wars. I, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is something that would like actually spawn or generate Sentinels. So basically just an underground access point for the Forerunners. Then we have the 19th Fleet. So the 19th also released their uh, Springbok, which we talked about previously. Uh, so that is now out and available. The 19th also has a massive focus on ships this week. Um, creating out a interior for a new vessel as well as a number of modular pieces inspired by Halo CE. Um, again, seeming to take inspiration from the creation of Project Shipyard. Now, uh, you know, we do see for them uh, a lot of interior hallway pieces, but they show off a uh, ODST drop bay, they show off um, just kind of like a standard corridor for the ship. It looks like it just runs kind of length of the ship. Now their ship is going to be a Hillsboro, which is a light destroyer, uh, but it is quite a large vessel, significantly larger than the frigate it seems in comparison, at least with the current in-game shot that we have. 
Um, so this will be another great UNSC vessel, a much bigger option compared to the Drake class or apparently even the frigate, and will have a lot of space for, you know, larger units or people who don't necessarily want to have like multiple ships or something like that. And again, you know, even if you don't have an interior for this, uh, it's just going to make a great uh, set piece too. So that's going to be really awesome. I'm really excited about that with the 19th. Now, with that being said, guys, that is everything for this week. There was a lot of really awesome news, a lot of cool work in progress things. You know, with the 19th and the 1st, they're really fast to getting this stuff out. So I'm guessing we'll see some of this stuff probably within the next month, month and a half, maybe even significantly less at the rate some of it's going. This ship, at least the exterior ship for, like, the Hillsboro, looks like it's nearly completed, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see that as, like, a static prop without an interior first, and then the interior coming at a later point. Uh, you know, on the first and new side of things, of course, a lot of that stuff was much earlier work in progress without texturing or anything like that, so that's a little bit further out, but again, um, the first MEU has been very quickly pumping some of that stuff out, so I'm guessing we shouldn't see that for uh, too long. Uh, the Shadow still hasn't been released for the MEU, so we'll probably see that first, because that is, of course, textured and configured in game and just needs some additional tweaking before it's released to the public. Um, so, you know, it's really a question, I guess, the biggest one that I think we're all waiting for, personally me, is the the flood and again they look like they're pretty far along you know we've got working combat forms and everything i'm guessing there's probably still a lot of tweaking and stuff that we don't see here in the video um but hopefully we shouldn't have to wait too long for the flood either all right guys that's gonna be it for this week's video uh and again just let me know what you guys are most excited for other than that uh take it easy i'll see you all in the next one